Hey everybody, uh, my name is Cameron Dennis. I've uh, been working here foundation for the last two and a half years or so. I've uh, been in the blockchain space for about six, and my background is actually in education. So we start block I run this nonprofit that starts blockchain. Uh, public keys so if we're trying to onboard like all of beyonce's fans to web3 they don't need to use a 0x you know 64 character hexadecimal public key i'm camera.near so you can send me money via camera.near uh, the other really cool thing is that it's never gone down you know this is really important for blockchains that are supposed to be providing the infrastructure for you know the world's money did and governance second third thing is that it's super scalable it can process theoretically about 100,000 transactions per second one or two second block finality. You can pretty much build anything that you want to build on any chain on near, and it's just as fast. That's the cool thing is that it is carbon neutral. And so there is a carbon buyback program. Uh, and yeah, the thing that actually costs the most carbon in the near ecosystem are the flights for the employees at the Years Foundation going from conference to conference. So uh, that's pretty neat. Just some metrics. Uh, we have around 23 million accounts on mainnet right now. About a thousand apps uh, building, and this is across the EVM, which is called Aurora. Uh, the super cracked dev team rewrote the entire Ethereum virtual machine in Rust on Near as a smart contract. So I forgot to mention this piece, but Near is what we call Wasm based. So you can actually write smart contracts in Rust, JavaScript, Solidity, and people are building Python SDK and TypeScript SDK. But to me, this is like a prerequisite to mass adoption because if we're trying to build the open web, it needs to be actually understandable by people. It can't, you know, shouldn't have to be a senior software engineer to be able to like review where your money is going. And so I think with JavaScript support, we're going to enable, you know, I can go to any web development bootcamp in the world and ask them, hey, do you want to learn how to program money? And then get them programming money. That's really neat. The barrier of entry is so much lower. So, um, yeah, lots of DAOs. All the infrastructure exists already, like the DAO tooling, DeFi tooling, like infrastructure, NFT standards. It's all there. You can literally build anything you want on your today. So this has been some incredible growth over the last year or so. Uh, it's about 10x increase uh, from 2 million accounts to 23 million accounts, uh, 100 projects to 1,000 projects. And also the Near Foundation raised around uh, $800 million last about a year and a half ago. Um, by some of the largest funds in the space. What's really cool about this though, is that no single fund owns a huge portion of the protocol. This is what we've seen as a huge threat to ecosystems recently, where you know if a single fund owns a huge portion of the protocol and they go down for whatever reason, uh, it could cause some tremendous turmoil in the ecosystem. So this is quite well you know, diversified across the funds. And the role of the Near Foundation, by the way, it's the Swiss-based nonprofit, is just to raise awareness in Near support the projects building the ecosystem and ultimately providing a clear path towards decentralization. The Near Foundation is actually in the bylaws, and I can dive into this a bit later, but the Near Foundation is working to decentralize. What does this mean? Well, this $1.1 billion that it currently manages is intended to be actually controlled by the community. So a huge initiative called the Near Digital Collective, and it's just getting started now but uh, there's about $11 million allocated to this DAO to start recreating a lot of the same programs that the foundation has been, like, been doing over the last four, four years in a more distributed way. So if anyone's interested in getting more involved in that, there are specific working groups for dedicated programs. But um, yeah, the team is also super cracked. Uh, we have people all around the world, uh, different hubs. US hub is actually probably one of the smallest hubs, 
Uh, the U.S. was not a priority market for the New York Foundation for quite a while. Um, and I'm actually leaving the New York Foundation to focus on the U.S. market. So uh, we actually have workshops here in New York every single week. James, James, raise your hand. Um, we also are going to one run more demo days, more like dinners, you know, get the community together. Just to be clear, this community is primarily for founders and builders. Everyone is welcome, but we want people to ship. Just want to be crystal clear here. We don't want a bunch of people just coming in, drinking booze, and leaving. That is not the goal. So, um, a little brief history for those who, anyone here is like interested in AI, like machine learning? Cool. So, Nier actually started off as an AI company because the co founder, this guy, Ilya Polosukin, up in the top left, he is a co author of a paper called Attention is All You Need. Attention is All You Need is what describes Transformers for the first time. Transformers is the T in chat GPT. And so where Nier originally started was a crowdsourced data labeling platform. So people can get paid just to accurately label data sets to then train large language models. The issue there, the reason why it pivoted to blockchain L1, is because you need a network to facilitate those payments where the transaction fee is lower than the payment itself. Because if you try to do this on a bunch of other layer ones, the transaction fee a lot of times is higher than the payment. And that's the problem. And this all started back in like 2017 or so. So they literally over-engineered this giant amazing blockchain that addresses all these issues that other blockchains don't to solve this one issue. Now, what's really cool here is that you know, this vision did not go away. Uh, one of the co-founders is still super, super interested in this. The other co-founder, Ilya, is more focused on the blockchain side. And this is all kind of coming full circle. Four years later, built a protocol that scales, has you know billions of dollars of value on it, thousands of apps or a thousand plus apps. And now we're you know kind of reaching back to the point where we can create in the perfect world a decentralized, community governed super intelligence. That is the original vision of here. So uh, I kind of talked about this already. Today, you know, if you want to learn more about like the unique things in here, you can come visit us at the booth or like the little like room. But today we're going to be talking about this thing called the blockchain operating system. It's a, it's a relatively uh, significant refocus for the ecosystem, where uh, instead of all these blockchain developers having to deploy on all these different L1s, L2s, L3s, honestly, it's kind of a road to nowhere. Um, we want to give users a single panel of glass or a single view to access any app in Web3 in a decentralized way as long as they host their front end on Near. So James is here to talk a little bit more about this. For those who may have seen the tutorials, uh, this is exactly what we're you know, interested in pushing today. But just to keep in mind, this is one piece of this greater ecosystem. There's still all this other DeFi and DAOs and NFTs and infrastructure stuff happening. This is just one team focused on this. And so, yeah, James, if you want to come up, better explain boss. And uh, yeah, thanks all for coming. Can you can All right. Um, you pull up that. Which one? The other slides. You have slides? Yeah. Oh, I don't have this. Oh, okay. Maybe okay. Which first the slide? Oh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Hey, everybody. My name is James. I've been working in the NIR ecosystem for a few years now. I've been learning to code using NIR as well. So if you're like me, you know, trying to make your way in the world of tech and you don't know where to start, I would point you right here to NIR Social, which is the product that Cameron referenced as just one part of this bigger near blockchain operating system and it's kind of like a unified identity protocol for anyone who is building on near or using near and it's really cool because you have these composable widgets or front-end components that you might find in your typical react or view angular you know applications and a lot of the infrastructure that we use today for DeFi or DAOs and nfts relies on web to front end or off chain features that are not reliable they're you know not decentralized so what we're doing is building a system for 
decentralized front end, and we're calling it the blockchain operating system because just like Linux or Windows or Mac, you know, this operating system makes it easier for users to interact with blockchains. And that means any blockchain, not just near. So the real magic of BOSS would be that you could use the front end components to interact with any blockchain. So you could talk to a contract that is running on Ethereum or a contract running on a Cosmos blockchain or anything you know, under the sun of, of the blockchain ecosystem overall. So the code for the front end lives on near and it's actually stored in a contract that we call the social database. And that's uh, what we're talking about when we say near social. But there are various gateways for interacting with that contract. And there's a virtual machine that uh, runs under the hood of those gateways, enabling a React-like developer experience. So essentially what we're doing is learning how to build React code on chain. And this diagram represents the blockchain operating system. So that's new. You know, we're looking at the protocol, at the base layer, great infrastructure that Cameron referenced. You know, we have all this amazing tooling and a data platform for building whatever you would be able to build anywhere else and more. So, you know, that's for building contracts or indexers or, you know, the, the kind of full stack of blockchain development. But what we're talking about today is the front end, which you know, enables the truly decentralized applications, on top of which you can build these great experiences for users, you know, path onboarding, even stuff like chat and, and uh, more real-time interactions. And using this diagram that you saw before, we can take what we saw in the previous slide and put it in the green rectangle. So it's the same thing you saw in the previous slide, but now you can visualize how it connects to other blockchains like Bitcoin, Ethereum, you know, there's basic attention token and Brave browser, which is a multi-chain, you know, kind of gateway. And Sweat, which is actually on Near natively, and it's an example of the scalability of Near to uh, airdrop to 20 million users in, you know, less than a day. Uh, so it's just a visualization of how the core blockchain operating system actually supports the multi-chain ecosystem. And... Here's the basic idea that, that we want to you know, bring home today, right? So composability is the benefit of the blockchain operating system. And you might have heard this word before talking about smart contracts because you have money Legos and DeFi where you can you know, easily combine different contracts and data from those contracts. And all of that is kind of like the new back end. But what we have now is a composable on-chain front-end solution. So all of these components are greater than the sum of their parts. You can see this page and each individual component, you know, gives rise to the, the user experience on, on this uh, domain. So what we have is different components made by individuals. And this application actually brings in components from various people. So not the same person has to build everything on the same page. And that's really cool because otherwise you'd have to go clone a GitHub repository and you know make your own version and push it and then maybe you do a pull request and it gets merged. You know, that's just a different experience than building together with everything on chain. So the front end code being on chain provides that composability and it can be a really uh, holistic experience for builders because now you have composability on both, you know, sort of the back end and the front end. And what that means would be composability across networks. So you can pull in data from an Ethereum contract, bring it into your on-chain widget or your, your component, which is just JavaScript. And then you might pull in data from near or from a Cosmos blockchain or whatever blockchain you prefer. And you can use those uh, data in your component, which is all on chain. And that's now a composable piece of, you know, widget code that others can fork or, you know, they can reuse it. Um, and, and that's groundbreaking. To me, that's a huge deal because never before could you really bring data into the front end 
across chains in such a reliable way, in such a you know secure and and really you know flexible way. But long story short, is composability is why we're here. The unstoppable nature of this would be another use case for you know certainty in the face of regulatory you know risks or, or um, you know maybe there's some kind of um, censorship resistance that you're looking for, but at the core of it, composability is why boss matters. And um, I'll go through a, a quick sort of like workshop, uh, but if you want to follow us and, and get uh, emails about all our cool events that are coming up, we're doing weekly workshops to delve more into building on Mir and building on the front end platform that I just showed you. Um, and we're going to go through a quick tutorial and we have a learn to earn challenge for this hackathon. So if you want to build your own page, you can fork a tutorial widget that I made. I'll show you in a second. And all you have to do is customize that page and save it, and you will get $50. So if you want to learn how to build widgets on the blockchain operating system, there you go. It's your chance to you know take a little bit of time this hackathon, learn something new, and it could change your career tra trajectory, it could change your life, change my. So, I want to invite all of you to participate in that challenge. Find me if you want to take five, 10 minutes and do it. I would love to sit down with anybody. And it's really simple. You can do it in three clicks. Uh, but the idea is that we want to get you started. And then we have prizes for builders. And this means you can actually build on another blockchain and create your front end on Near using this platform and be eligible for both prizes. So if you want to build on, on another blockchain, you can use this for your front end and still be eligible for the near prizes. Just keep that in mind. Uh, but of course, you can build on near. You can write a smart contract. You can build your whole application on near, and that would of course be eligible as well. Uh, so that's just a quick rundown of the prizes. Hopefully, you had a chance to get the newsletter. But now let's dive in to the three aha moments of near social. So we kind of gone through the first, the big idea, right? All of this you see on the screen here. This would be an example of a gateway. So we go to the domain near.social. There's another gateway if you prefer. It's called um, near discovery. We can pull that up as well. Oh, it's already pulled up here. Yeah, so cool thing about this, you know, everything on the page here is a component, and the code for those components is actually stored on chain. So anybody can go get the code from the chain and use it in their own page or their own application. So if we go up here to the top and we want to view the details of this component, this is the activity page that you just saw. This is the code for it. Here are the dependencies on the right. And you can actually go and uh, fork this. So you can take this code and make your own version of it and uh, even you know, see the, the preview of, of what we just saw. So. This, this component is available across gateways. So that's that's the, the, the first aha moment is that all the code on this platform is on chain. Pretty simple. Anything you see on here, you can dig into it, find the code, work it, make it your own. The second big deal is that you actually have both uh, gateways have all of the components. So, um, and, and there's more gateways, but if we go here, and um, we want to look at this uh, component. So this is the activity page on alpha.near.org, which is one of the gateways. It's a newer gateway. It has kind of a, a nicer look and feel. This one is, is the older, the original gateway. But if we, if we go to this URL, if you didn't see what I did there, I copied the path of the widget for the activity page of the other gateway. And now we're going to go there, and we have the same page on this gateway. So the code is actually stored on chain, so it's available on both gateways. And we can do the same thing if you want. Uh, you know, we can we can go to this and we we have just uh, you know replace this with uh, the mob here account, who is the illustrious Eugene the Dream, who is the creator of your social. Um, and then you can go to his homepage widget. And, and boom, you know, now we're on alpha.near.org, but it looks like the near.social homepage. So that's that's the idea of composability across gateways. 
But now let's get into the composability across the networks. Because this gateway, it's really unique because it's the first one that supports you uh, connecting to Ethereum. So instead of connecting to near, uh, you actually have a way to connect your Ethereum wallet right here. So as you can see you can use Wallet Connect or you know whatever uh, preferred Ethereum wallet that you would actually use. Um, but when you go into one of these components, we will take this uh, Lido component. So this is a staking widget. You know, it, all of this code is also uh, on chain, like like we discussed. Um, but you can actually see how um, when we we go. Oh, oops, sorry, then I fork this. So now um, we are actually looking at code that's written for Ethereum. So this is a little bit different than the code written for a near contract or for a near application, um, but it's still on near. So this code is is actually stored on the near blockchain in the social database. And then when we want to save it, we're actually using a near account. So you need your near account in order to save the widget code to near. But when you have a user on the page, they don't need a near account. They can just interact with an Ethereum contract using their MetaMask or whatever. So this is the, the big idea of the multi-chain ecosystem connected through a blockchain operating system that provides you know, accessible components to everybody who wants to build on any blockchain. So there's the, the three aha moments. You know, all the code is on chain. Uh, on chain. You have the composability across the gateways. And then, of course, this much bigger idea of composability across networks and, and multi-chain overall. So I think that's the most exciting part of it is now you, you don't really have to choose which blockchain you're building on. You don't have to get locked into one ecosystem. We can build for multiple communities and, and really just you know, provide the best possible user experience um, at the end of the day. So now we'll get back into this uh, tutorial. So if you're following along, you can go to hack.near.social. So that's the short link to this page. And this widget is an example of a customizable page. And so this is another kind of cool thing about near social. Um, we can actually edit pages. And if I edit this, it won't change it for you. So you can still go to hack.near.social and see the same thing. But it would change it for me. So I would actually have whatever I'd like to see on that page. Um, and it's really useful when you want to have maybe a, a custom menu. Like you you want to come in here and we could add, you know, like a, a widget for notifications, right? Um, so let's we could search for notification. Actually, let's do Flappy Boss. It's more fun. Flappy Boss is a game that we're going to add to our home page. Uh, so it's just like Flappy Bird, right? Uh, you know, you can kind of play it. It's it's a good example of just a fun little widget. And a, whoops, now I can save my score, but it's not a very good score. I won't do that. Well, you, you can ha happily play with any of the games available. But what I'm trying to, oh, I didn't save, I'm sorry. Um, whoops. So if I add the Flappy Boss to page and then save it, I'm actually saving to my settings here. So I'm going to save this and it's going to update my home page side menu. So if I go back to hack.near.social, you will see the Flappy Boss game is right here, but it won't show up on your page because this is just my settings. I'm changing the page, you know, side menu for me, but not you. Um, there's definitely a possibility to kind of submit pull requests and change defaults for, for code as well. And if you want to talk more about that, I'd be, I'd be happy to delve into it. Um, but I just wanted to explain the, the customization feature. Um, and, and that's just the way to think about this page as anything. You can work this and make it anything you want. You can change out the widgets and it becomes a customizable page for the users. And so you would change the defaults on your own and people can go change their version of your page however they want. Um, but the demo, the tutorial that you have to do in order to get your you know, 50 bucks and a, a nice hat, and, uh, there's even a, a 
bonus challenge if, if you're able to complete the everything tutorial. Uh, so if you're interested in how to bridge your on-chain components with off-chain components, let's talk because there's a whole tutorial for that. And it's a uh, you know, challenge. So if you, if you complete that, you get a little bit of a bonus prize. So talk to me after and we'll, we'll figure it out. Um, but this is the, the basic tutorial. So what we have here is what you just saw. It's just part of the, the page. And all you have to do, here's a hint, all you have to do is these three things. You, you can scroll down here, and there's three instructions. So it's a little bit hidden from the, the comments of the code. But if you go back to this uh, hacked up here page, it's also here. If you go to about, it's the same instruction up here. And there's some resources for your build. Um, if we're uh, following the instructions, what we have to do is edit this tag here. Right here, we can uh, edit whichever tag you'd like to filter the widgets by. So now, under this uh, all tutorial section, we can see all of the widgets or components that have the dev tag, because I just changed it to dev. Before it was guide. So if we change it back, this is what you'll see. So that's what you want to do. You just kind of explore the available widgets, filtering them by your tag, and just pick your favorite tag. Maybe we do meme. You know that that's a fun one. So we'll say we'll save that as uh, so meme widgets. And then step two is that we're gonna update this widget. So this is an example of composability, plain and simple. We're talking to another widget and we're getting this source path here. So all you have to do is change this app. Put in whatever widget you want. So it just can't be the one that it already was. So I'm gonna put in the Flappy Boss again. I think it's that's how you do it. Or uh, I think it's uh, microchip. So that that's a uh, now uh, it's not the right name. Sorry, one second. Um, Flappy oh, meme Flappy. Yes. Okay. All right. Um, we this is a good example of. Why are you gotta you know, be what you tied? So this is the challenge here. Uh, all right, so you can see Flappy box, right? So you can change whatever widget you like. And then the third step, final step, that now we're gonna use the template. So instead of just referencing any widget and plug it in for A, we're gonna use the template, which is a card, and we're gonna feature this. Three key widgets that we like. So your job is to go find three cool widgets, and then you do the same kind of thing you did before, where you take this path, you put it in this. Um, this step, you're going to do it here. So it's pretty simple. With this path, this widget that we're going in, and we're going to pass it the props of the source path for another widget we want to feature. So I'm going to put in my uh, Dow project like that. So um, we can we can do uh, you know the NFT project is a laser chest. Um, have all the people with this. But we'll just uh, show quickly how this one shows up now. You have the common Dow widget, and if you you click here, it goes to the details of that that widget. But that's all you have to do to get fifty bucks and some swag. So. It's a really fun way to just explore the different widgets available, and you can you know learn some JavaScript along the way. And if you're interested in building further, talk to me about what we're doing on the platform. The main use case is education and collaboration. So we're all building together, and, and that's really the the most exciting part of it. Yeah, spritz. Yeah. So what we're gonna do this weekend is we're gonna create a sprint plan and we have this gigs board so uh if you don't know pagoda is formerly known as near inc they're kind of like the core dev team of near and they made this component which is called the developer governance gigs board and it has a lot of cool stuff like if you're looking for the most advanced widget here you go it's it's got the most bells and whistles it has a, a unique contract it uses permission 
options that had, you know, these uh, different uh, types of content that you can pull up. It has tags, it has authors, it's, it's a great way to dig in if you really want to like, see the limits of what people are doing right now. Um, and the full of the other advanced switch would be the everything with it. So I'm interested in bringing them off into you if you wish. Let's talk about everything. But this one represents a process where sprint plan. What we have is if you go in here and you type in hashtag sprint, so we can find some of the sprint plans that people are sharing. So here's one that I wrote, and uh, it's it just ended. My my uh, previous sprint just ended Friday, so I'm creating a report and a, another plan for the upcoming two weeks. And you can. Do it however you want. You could do a one week sprint, a three week sprint. All you have to do is just let people know what you're building. And then you could even request funding. You could request support. You could talk about challenges and ask for feedback or ask for you know guidance or you know, just let people know what's blocking you or what is, is hard for you to figure out. And, and people will jump in and, and help you learn. And I'm I'm sure there's somebody who's already thinking about problems that you encounter them. So please share. And uh, what we'll do is we'll have a sprint plan for hashtag NYC. So this is going to be a part of the local community we're building together. So if you want to build stuff for NYC, you just throw in the hashtag NYC. So you can do a sprint plan that's, you know, this one is about community and no code onboarding. It's, it's like a, a page builder. So this is what I'm going to be doing. I'm, I'm polishing up the, the sprint report and the plan for next two weeks um, based on this, this plan. But uh, we could have a plan that is made for NFTs, but it's also related to the NYC community because you're based here and you're collaborating with others at our workshops and you know getting to know people through the blockchain operating system and the social network that is provided, kind of like a GitHub that it's, that's on chain. Uh, but, the, the goal that we're, we're going to deliver, you know, this weekend is a new sprint plan. And so if you would like to participate, you can be included in this sprint plan and there can be retroactive bounties or even, you know, hiring opportunities. Like you, you can get a job by participating in this planning process because this way we can actually understand what we need and not have like unnecessary duplication of efforts. And it's just like, a better way to learn and, and make sure that we're thinking through like what we're building and we're not just hacking away and, and going all over the place like we're actually coordinating so if you want to participate you know find me we can do the tutorial you can spec out a project a, a product or a project that you want to you want to build in the next two weeks and then we can talk about how you can get from here to there and we're we're here to support you we're here to help you learn build and grow. So I really just can't wait to meet you and I'm happy to take questions if we have any. Um, but yeah, thanks for bringing up the sprint planning. We definitely want to get more people involved and it's a great way to earn by learning. So you keep learning and keep building after the hackathon and then you keep finding opportunities. Yeah, that makes sure. Yeah, everyone asked me for internships. Um, there's not like traditional internships, at least there's very few in Web3. It's about you participating in like the open source community providing value, and then you get hired. Like, that's generally how it flows, um, just for context, because I, everybody asks me this. Like, this is borderline an internship, just to be clear. Yeah, yeah it's, it's a great learning experience just for like getting into the space, too. If you're not familiar with how like, Web3 operates, it's, it's much more open, it's much more kind of like, go-getter mentality, you know, self-starters are very much encouraged. But I think it's also very welcoming and, you know, there's a very supportive community that, you know, wants other people to learn how to help others. You know, that's the goal here. Like, if we can be somebody who's not really building all this stuff, wants to help others with all this stuff, then you're going to find ways to get hired in this place, I guess. But it's a change. So, John, that was interesting you and yeah if you're studying a particular topic there's that overlap with blockchain technology you just have to look 
or uh, you know just explore it until you find something with it. Yeah, why too? Yep, yeah, first get one for six. 